let's talk about the perfect tent. So this beauty was my first ever backpacking tent. So it weighed and was about as compact as a Fiesta XR2, but it only cost me about 30 pounds secondhand and it got me to places that I'd never been before. So it's a bit bulky and heavy and you've got to pitch the inner tent first. So it wasn't quite what I'd call perfect. So when it comes to searching for the perfect tent, it's quite subjective because we've all got different needs that we want from a shelter, whether it be lightweight, compact, or we might be on a budget and we've got to fit it into a certain price range. So although this tent was superb for the money, I wanted something a little bit lighter and so began my search for the perfect tent. So the next tent for me was the Van Gogh Zenith 200. It was quite a bit more compact than this, weighed in uh, around two kilos, uh, it fit in my rucksack, which was the main thing for me. It was really easy to pitch. Did have a couple of problems with snap poles, but apart from that, it took me on many a great adventure. It was round about the time that I was thinking about going on YouTube and I was watching loads of stuff like Darwin on the trail. He was using some really ultralight stuff and that got the cogs turning a little bit, which meant I had to get an even lighter trekking pole tent. And the uh, Six Moons Designs Skyscape Scout. It was a really interesting design, but I found loads of little niggles with the tent and I eventually moved it on and <laughs> went even smaller and got into bivy and hammock camping for a little while. I was doing a lot of bushcraft at the time, so the hammocks, bivvies and tarps made a lot of sense for the type of camping I was doing at, around that time. But the hills started calling me back and I wanted what I thought was the best of the best when it came to tents. I wanted a Hilleberg. So I sent a message to Roger. Um, he was a YouTuber from a channel called Gone for a Ratch. Um, he had the Hilleberg Solo and the Hilleberg Acto. And I was umming and arming which one I wanted. So I, he said he preferred the Acto and that's the one that he recommended. So I took his advice and that's the one I went for. To be honest, the Hilleberg Acto was a superb tent and a, a big upgrade from the Vango. Uh, however, I was starting to get regrets that I didn't buy the Hilleberg Solo. I wanted a tent that was freestanding so I could move it around. These sort of hoop tents, you just have to pitch them and then you're stuck with it unless you, you take everything down. So the answer was obviously buy another tent. <laughs> so I went for the Wild Country Helm 2, which was a semi freestanding tent, but it had quite a lot more room in than the Hilleberg Acto. And to be honest with you, it was a really, really good, robust tent. Because it was freestanding, it meant that if I'd pitched on a bit of ground that was uneven, I could just pick the tent up, move it a couple of feet, and then Bob's your uncle. I really enjoyed using that tent. However, again, I started looking for little niggles, and although it was freestanding, you still needed a couple of pegs just to get the corners out properly. Uh, I wanted something that was totally freestanding. So that led me to what I thought was the perfect tent, the Nature Hike Cloud Peak 2. It was basically a cheap copy of the Hilleberg Steiker or Solo sort of design anyway. The three pole geodesic structure meant there was acres of room inside the tent. Uh, two entrances, two vestibules, and a really good looking tent as well. But it was a little bit big for what I wanted for my solo adventures. Uh, and it wasn't really as robust as what I'd been used to with the Acto. So, I sold the Acto, bit the bullet, and bought the Hilleberg Solo. To be honest with you, that was the tent that I'd always wanted from day one. It was like the, the pinnacle of solo wild campers tents. You could pitch that tent in literally any conditions that the UK is going to throw at it, knowing that it's going to stand up to it. I used it in storms, torrential rain, high winds, you name it, the Hilleberg stood up to it. So you would think that it's the perfect tent, however, I was doing a few more longer trips and it weighed in around 2.6 kilos and it's about that sort of bulk actually. So I needed something, something else <laughs> that would do my uh, lightweight camping anyway. So along came the perfect lightweight tent, the Terra Nova Photon 1. Um, I used this tent no end of time to be honest with you and during this period I was flitting between the Hilleberg Solo and the Terra Nova depending on what the trip was. The Terra Nova weighed in at around 700, 750 grams. 
Um, it was incredibly lightweight and the actual tent itself packed down to the size of a watermelon. I experimented with a couple of other cheap tents like the uh, Flames Creed Lansham One. That was lightweight and good if you're on a budget, but it pitched a little bit high for me off the ground and let in lots of draft. I tried the Nature Hike Vic One, which was a single skin tent. Really lightweight again, however, because of the small space inside, your sleeping bag touched the outer part of the tent, so you ended up getting your gear wet inside. It was starting to bug me a little bit. I either had to choose between the Terra Nova, which was lightweight, but small and cramped, or the Hilleberg Solo, which is a little bit bulky and heavy for what I wanted to use on most of my trips. I was searching for that in between the two. So I thought another tent would fix it. I went for the Nordisk Telemark 2.2, long and wide. This had quite a lot of space inside the tent. Um, however, it flapped a lot in the wind. The inner and the outer, router? The inner and outer of the tent were too close together and they used to touch, so the inner would get wet. The Nordisk was a condensation magnet, which incidentally, the Hilleberg Solo was the same constantly getting wet gear inside. I tried a 60 pound OEX tent from Go Outdoors and I'd been thinking I'd spent all that money on all of these different tents and they weren't performing a huge amount better than the 60 pound tent. Yes, the materials were better and it was stronger, but for the most part, I could have got away with that 60 pound tent. So I decided no more. I stopped buying tents for a little while anyway. Um, until I came across the tarp tent scarp one. Now this looked a brilliant bit of kit on paper, um, but I, I just couldn't get hold of it. Every time I wanted to buy one, they were out of stock. They'd come in stock and they'd sell out within minutes. And eventually I managed to, to get my hands on one. And that at the time was my dream tent. The scarp one, for a one person tent, the amount of room in there was phenomenal. It's probably the best tent that I've had at coping with condensation. I got the additional cross poles, which meant it was very robust in windy conditions. That suddenly became my go-to tent and I was using it all the time. It got to a point where the Hilleberg Solo had been on the shelf for 12 months and I hadn't used it, um, which was a terrible waste. And then a little frustration started to creep in with the Scarp One. At the ends or the corners of the tent, there are these little fiberglass poles that you couldn't really take them out. So it meant that I couldn't just squash my tent down like I had been doing for, for years with all my other tents. It was quite a bulky tent and I was trying to get down to 33 litre packs on some camps. And that packability was one of the things that I craved in a tent. And then the solution came to me and I needed another tent. So I got my hands on the Terra Nova Southern Cross one. It's an incredibly lightweight tent and it's probably second to the Hilleberg Solo when it comes to robust tents that I used. The vestibule area in it is massive. Loads of room for your gear and for cooking in and it was totally freestanding as well. So I could pick it up and move it to wherever I wanted to. Perfect. Well, almost perfect. Apart from the sleeping compartment, which was just a little bit small if you're in there on long darker nights. Not so bad when it came to summer camps where you're only in six hours or so, but if you're in there 14 hours, it's quite an enclosed space. A few more tents came and went. Some made it onto the gear shelf, others made it back on eBay or in one of my raffles, something like that. I tried all sorts of tents from custom made MLD Duramid to ultralight MSR Freelight, and then some more budget friendly tents like the 3FUL Taiji and the Lanshan 2. And pretty much all the tents that I tried had some really good features, but none of them ticked every box. Which brings me to my two newest tents, the Wild Country Helm and the Durston X-Mid. They're both very different tents. One of them's a trekking pole tent, the other one's a freestanding tent. I think for around £150, the Wild Country Helm 1 ticks the most boxes for me when you factor in things like the price, the quality, just how robust it is. It'll handle most of the conditions that I can throw at it in the UK all year round and it easily fits in your backpack. By the way, Terra Nova is still running my special discount code. I'll leave that in the description below if anybody wants to check that out. I still need to test out the Durst and X-Mid in some of the tougher conditions, but so far I think it's a breath of fresh air when it comes to practical design.
But I've got a video showing you that in action coming out pretty soon. So the perfect tent. I've known for quite a while now that it's a bit like trying to find that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Uh, I know it's not really there, but I'm still going to keep trying to find it. But what I do know is that when I look back, the memories won't be of tents, stoves or sleeping bags. It's the experience of seeing the world from the top of a mountain or waking up above the clouds or seeing that perfect sunset or sunrise. They're the, the things that I remember. The feeling that you get from camping in the latest and greatest tent is no better than the feeling that you got when you camped in your first tent. So don't be like me. Don't waste your money when you've already got perfection.